Okay, a new day. This is a follow-up with a brake problem. So now I'm at the Bilex Park in Bosch and we are measuring the... Well, we're measuring the disc. It's called... Uh, what is it called again? Warp rotor. Yeah, if, if the disc is like... Or the rotor is not straight, then we will see it here. So if you rotate here, we can see at that meter Zero. Okay, so it's zero now. Zero in the measurement, only zero in the here. Okay. So if you, when we rotate, if we see some, if we have warp rotor, it will have bigger uh, uh, diff than this. So this one seems to be fairly straight on the rear left side. Hmm. Okay, it's still a mystery why it heats up. Well, okay. Uh, should we try the other side then? Yes, we can try the other side, no problem. Okay. So th this is the rear, um, rear right side, okay. And then if you turn the, the rotor, let me see, oh, let me focus there. That's pretty huge. Whoa, look at that, that's, what is it? Yeah, so this is one of them, so it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> so this one is provided, the yeah, rotor, right? Fault, uh, that the car is, uh, I think, is shaking mm. when, uh, when it's used as brake. Yeah, so it's this one. Okay, it's been a couple of days now and suddenly we are in Bergen. So I drove MC Hammer here, a a sh just a short intro here. So after the previous episode, a company from Bergen called me. It's just a coincidence, they watched my video. I will tell you more about this. Bike. These are pretty cool people. These are ex-Tesla employees. So they have a company called uh, EV Services. And they are specialized towards Tesla, but also other EVs. So let's take a little look inside here, by the way. Um, one of the guys here, they drive a Taycan. <laughs> but, okay, I just have to show you guys, man. This is the ceramic brakes. They are freaking expensive, but man, do they look good. Holy guacamole. Okay, anyway, so we are here not for the Taycan. We are here for the EV services. So let's, uh, um, let's show you guys. I was actually expecting bigger garage. Yes, here are the guys. <laughs> so these people, they have background in Tesla. And let's just take a look. So I was expecting bigger, bigger garage than this, but this is for now and it will grow big. Yeah. yeah. This is only for now. Yeah, for now. So can we take a quick tour now around, maybe start yeah. over there? Of course. Let's go. This is the workshop. Here yeah, we have the daily parts. For now it's just your parts. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. For now it's just your parts uh, being here, but uh, um, normally it's uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and so on. And uh, this is where we uh, greet the customers, welcome. And um, yeah, write them in the, to the booking and so on and so on. Oh, sorry, you have to hold it. Too. Oh yeah, okay. okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, here I'm sitting normally when I'm not uh, working at the cars, of course. Um, yeah, and... Uh, in here we have a little office some, with some, uh, some coffee and, uh, and our sales guy, you are. Hello. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the next room. Next room is the exciting room, yeah. So, this is Carl's okay. place. So uh, my name is Carl and uh, this is where I usually work. So uh, this is where we do electronic uh, repairs. So. Uh, Everything from, from door handles to, to MCU repairs on the is Teslas. That is it MCU? Yeah, that's the MCU one from an older Model S. But uh, this is the, the display mm -hmm. for the MCU. Yeah. So, Ooh. so see, this is the difference between you guys and a traditional repair shop. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, so I have a, a, a background from uh, uh, within electronic repairs, uh, but I'm I have always been a a, a gearhead, uh, so 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 the combination uh, uh, with um, working on cars and electronics is perfect for me for me. Uh, 
So, cool. yeah. Okay, let me, can we go check out up, upstairs also? Of course. Yes. So, all right, so um, upstairs we have uh, also, I guess for cu customers. Yeah. They have, oh, okay, the, the white balance is a little bit off, but let me show you guys. So EV services, and I'm not sure if they're gonna be a, yeah, okay, let's, let's check it out. So this is the, the lounge, shall we call it. For customers, they can sit here and chill. And then there's also another desk here. So it's still not big today, but uh, I want to know more about this company, by the way. So EV services, what is that? Yeah, my name is Jacob and uh, I'm a former employee at Tesla for four years and uh, I uh, started up EV services in 2018. It's an electrical work, uh, electric car workshop where we are uh, focusing only on electric vehicles. We are uh, servicing them, we are repairing them and we are diagnosing them. And uh, the plan is to have both parts, uh, transportation companies within the EV uh, logo and also uh, have a, a, a re refurbish uh, thing where we send out our used parts, repair them and send them back to our workshop centers again. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's an idea of something huge in the, in the auto, auto industry, for sure. Uh, I heard that you, you've been working in Tesla before, right? Eh? Yeah, for four years. So, uh, so as an employee in Tesla, we've uh, encountered a lot of uh, experiences. We've uh, grown as people and uh, from the Tesla experience, we want to start up this, uh, to follow that way as Tesla does. That, hence the white floors on the workshop and, and the cleanliness on the, on the workshops that we, that we run here. So that's kind of the concept that we want to drive through uh, and, and we believe that this is the new way of doing workshops like that. But, it the whole, you're not supposed to compete with Tesla or? No, no, we're not competing with Tesla. We don't see ourselves as competitors to Tesla. In fact, we see ourselves as a, as a right-hand guide for Tesla. If they, wanna, if they wanna use us, they do that. And we, we are pro-Tesla here. We are totally Tesla guys. Too. So, so we, we love the, the whole thing about Tesla and we, we just wanna help out where we can. Yeah. Yeah, so, so as Jacob said, we want to be the best alter alternative to Tesla. So there are some things that, that Tesla cannot do. Uh, for example, they won't, uh, uh, for example, install uh, LED bars on the cars or, or do some, uh, some repairs that we can do here. So, so we, we, we see a place for us as, a, as an alternative to, to Tesla service, uh, but we also do all uh, kinds of work on other electric vehicles. Uh, so. We are not only focusing on Tesla, but since we are, we both uh, have experience from working within Tesla, it's uh, it's uh, normal for us to to focus on on Tesla. But you know, the reason why I'm here is because uh, I'm going to get some new brakes on. Can you tell a little bit about the brakes? Yeah. So we have we are now a, a retailer for uh, NRS brakes, and. Um, they, they make galvanized brake pads for, for all electric vehicles and uh, they have a specialized uh, EV lineup uh, brake pads uh, designed to, to uh, help with all the issues that we see on the electric uh, cars regarding brakes. Um, so yeah, we will install uh, new rotors on your car uh, and it's uh, original Tesla rotors but we have coated them with a zinc coating to, to help with the corrosion. And uh, then you will uh, will drive for six months or 12 months and then we will take your car in again and see how the brakes are doing. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to <laughs> see them. Yeah. All right, so I guess we should just get going. Then. Yeah, let's do it. Right, okay, great. Okay, now we will check the brake disc if it's been warped you know. so uh, we have this device here with a magnet and then there's a needle going towards the disc or the rotor and i guess if you start twisting it you see there's a there, there, there. okay So there's a, a little bit, right? A little bit of warping, but I would say that this this uh, rotor is within spec, so it has 
roughly 0 0.01 millimeter of warping where we are measuring now. Okay. Huh. I still wonder why did that, why did this uh, rotor get warm? Yeah. Is there a reason for it? That's a good question. So uh, we will probably see more when we uh, when we remove the calipers and the old brake pads. Uh, it could be that they are not installed properly or that they have been seized for some reason. Um, but uh, um, as you can see, the the disc the rotor is is dark here and. Um, this is signs of uh, overheating. Oh, yeah. well, I did try to to break hard. Yeah. And this is the rear right. You see that? Okay, uh, camera sometimes problem focusing. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, that, that's... Yeah. Is this within specification or...? Yes, it's still within specification. Uh, but since you said you had vibrations in the car, car when braking, I would say that this corrosion that you have here on the rotors is causing the vibrations. Because if the brake rotor is warped, especially in the rear, you will, you will most likely feel it in the, in the brake pedal. So if you if you do not see uh, if you do not have any vibrations in the brake pedal, but still has vibrations while while braking, I would say that this corrosion here is probably the cause for, for that. And why is it this this section here is bland, uh, nice, but then on the side here we have some yeah. weird. Yeah. What is that? Though? So uh, you told me that you have the Tesla installed new brake pads for you, but before they did that, you probably had uh, more corrosion here and here on the rotor. So now I'm just going to apply a thin layer of uh, ceramic paste here uh, to protect against corrosion and also to make sure that the, the brake pad is, is sliding properly. Uh, and uh, we use this ceramic paste here because it's the it's what uh, what Tesla what Tesla is using, and also because it's non-conductive. So sometimes you use uh, some workshops they like to use uh, copper paste, for example, and uh, we try to not do that because uh, sometimes it can actually increase uh, corrosion due to to. Uh, galvanic current go going through the between the al aluminum, the steel, and the copper. So we try to use a non-conductive paste. Okay, just a thin layer. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. So this is the old brake ro rotor. Huh? Yeah. So we're taking it out and. Yeah, we could put in the. Yeah. Because it looks like this. Uh, so th this is the old rotor, the old uh, Brembo rotor, and uh, as you can see, there you have had some some corrosion here, uh, but uh, uh, it's not so bad. We have measured the, the warping and it's within specification, but we want to replace them anyway because we are now testing the NRS brake pads, so we want to use those with new ro brake rotors and uh, so we have new ori original brake rotors here but we have put some extra coating on this area just a, a sink uh, coating to make sure that uh, to protect against visible corrosion so this is the the stock coating that uh, they apply in the factory and this is the the sink coating that we have uh, applied here so it's still well it's tesla but it's brembo brake yeah, it's, it's uh, original Tesla Brembo brakes. Yeah. So let's see. Let me just put it in. Yeah, so we have cleaned the hub here now to make sure that there are not uh, any uneven, uh, s s to make sure that the, even, the surface is, is flat and clean. Uh, So 
So here we see the, the, the so-called new brake pad. This is the, the, the brake pad that Tesla installed for me just a couple of weeks ago. And there's already a little weird uh, crack there or whatever. So supposedly this is not from the factory, it started already. And for you guys who know the history, the reason why Tesla changed it in the first place was there was a big chunk from the old pad that just broke off. And this is the NRS brake pads. And then here we just happen to have some old Model, what is it, S? Model S, yes. Model S. Well, it looks like it's 15 years old. <laughs> now, now, these have been lying outside for a week or so, so okay. that's why you see all these miscolors and so. But the chipping here is, uh, is the original problem and uh, the reason why we replaced it. Whoa. Also, if I can move yeah, this yeah. a little uh -huh. bit, you can see that the, the brake pad is actually de detaching from the back plate. And that is the reason for that is moist coming inside of the of the material here, as well as it is will it is actually breaking off here as you see. Hmm. And the reason is uh, uh, the blend of the of the material and the and the lack of heat that you get on electric cars because you you break so little uh, and you have so much regenerative uh, brake breaking uh, from the uh, the engines. This, however, is a different blend. A much denser blend, the moist will not get into this, uh, this blend, as well as uh, it is attached to the backing plate in a, different, in a different way. Imagine small hooks sitting up here uh, instead of just adhesive glue. So it will, never, it will never release from its backing plate on this one. Was it, you know, I heard about that it actually, on, on the traditional brake pad, this this thing can just fall off. Exactly. Right? It happened on the Model S. Yeah, right? it happens on a lot of electric cars, and you see actually, it's it's detaching in inside oh, here. Oh, it's starting. Yeah, it is starting, and it's a normal problem that we see on uh, both Model S, X, and other electric vehicles as well. It is the lack of heat uh, that that causes the adhesive glue to not reattach itself because the the brakes will never get as hot as they are meant to be. These brake pads here are meant for uh, internal combustion engines and the, the old type of vehicles. While well, these brake pads here are designed specifically for electric uh, cars. Really promising, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I remember I heard about this on Rich Rebuilds. Yeah. And I looked on the website and I was thinking, oh, wow, but it's, this is from uh, America, no, Canada. Canada, right? yes, that's right. And you guys are the only one who yeah, that's right. We, in Norway. Uh, we are, have teamed up with uh, NRS brakes in Canada and uh, we have received the exclusivity in uh, all of the Scandics. So, uh, so we, are, we are retailers on this one from now on. Nice. Yeah, very. And this is the front brake pads. So this is um, almost one, 15 months old or something. So never been replaced from the factory. And this is the NRS uh, brake pads. So, okay, how is the condition on this one? I think actually the condition on these ones are looking very, very neat, very good. Uh, you don't see a lot of rust build up yet, and you have all the edges still here. It's nice and, and square uh, around here, edged. And also you see actually the protection film here is still, is, is still sitting on. So that's pretty, pretty neat and pretty good. Also, there is a lot of, there's a lot of material left on the brake pads, but it does, however, show uh, a little sign of you not breaking that much. <laughs> I like regen. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the thing. You see actually a little bit of rust uh, colors uh, on, on this uh, inner brake pad here. But it will go away if I just break That them. would go away if you take a hard break, yeah. Okay. So it does seem like uh, it's just been a, a, a long time since you've braked hard. And then I see these ones, they have this uh, groove or whatever here. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, this is uh, something they do for, for uh, removing a lot of the dirt and, uh, and uh, built up uh, debris and stuff. And also it, uh, it makes uh, cooling a bit better on the brakes. Hmm. And again, the same thing with the material NRS uh, thing. They make these edges here also for removing a lot of debris and, uh, and dirt. Uh, and so keeping the, the, the contact plate here is really, really nice. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what about this? This is the front brake disc. That's correct. This is the front brake disc and then the, this is the inside of it. And as you see, you have a lot of rust buildup 
from this point here to this point here. You have a lot of then here you don't have rust buildup, and then again here you get rust buildup again. So it seems a bit to me like you're not breaking as hard as you should, <laughs> but uh, also uh, you only you almost only have brake power from this point to this point. Oh, that means less safety. And it's not so good. A, a EU, EU control or TUV uh, would be uh, difficult to approve with the, this kind of brake uh, disc uh, in Norway. But well, just a question here, will it be better if I use these brake pads? Will I get less of this? Absolutely, I, we believe so. This material here is much harder and much denser, so this will grind much more on the, on the, on the disc. It might also give a little bit more wear on the disc, but I would think the wear is much better than, than tear, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so with these pads, I believe we, were, we, will, we will be replacing discs when they are worn not because they are rusted. Ah, oh, I see, good and, point. And it's a bit of a material waste, in my opinion, to replace discs that just have some rust built up on them. A, but it's, it's rules, hmm. it cannot be like that. Uh, what about the other side? What the other side, the... yeah. The other side actually looks pretty nice. Okay. Not so much rust build up. And that's uh, a surface rust, right? Yeah, but that's, that's just some rust because it's been standing outside, I think. Uh, this is actually pretty good looking. A little bit heat colored, but not nothing to worry about at all. Okay. And it seems like uh, all the the coating here or the paint here has, uh, has stuck pretty well. Um, uh, except that the, the coating is super thin on this uh, area here, but uh, there's a reason for that. Huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, applying some uh, grease here so it so it slides better. Corrosion also, protection. So now we have new disc and new pads on all wheels. And you see there's a, a little bit of coating on the disc here that will go away as soon as we use the brakes. So I guess now we will take it for a little spin, test drive, and see how it is. Oh, what to say? They, they feel better. And we don't have that wobbliness like we had before. So let's see. Well, you're not supposed to brake too hard when they are branch banking new, but when I brake, Nice and even and smooth braking, just like it's supposed to be. I don't know what, what caused the problems I had, but this is good. Yeah, this is, this is way better. Okay, let's try again. Brake a little bit and oh yeah, see? Nice and smooth. Let's hope it stays like this. That, that's a thing because if you, you could put in standard brakes and it would be nice. And then after a winter, it would be shit, right? Okay, let's go back here and we're just gonna take a look at them now. Oh, this looks great, man. So we, uh, we took off the wheels again just to inspect. You see here we have the, the coating, the galvanized coating and everything. So, we saw, you saw that, uh, well, you can see it here also. That dark, uh, well, gray thing has been uh, uh, sanded off now. So now it's, it's good. So man, it looks great. No, you don't realize how important it is to have, the, to have the rotors nice and clean because if you put some nice wheels and rims, oh yeah, yeah like, like the magnesium rims, then you will see that ugly, rusty part in behind there. So I should get those mag rims back on the car. But let's take a look at this side. So over here we have the wheels. What is these rims mounted? This is uh, Sox Turbine X. So you can see that it gives better impression when, uh, when the disc and everything looks nice and clean. So hopefully it will stay like this throughout the winter. Okay, all good. Now I just have to go back to Oslo and then I will repeat the test I did in the previous episode where I was supposed to measure the consumption. So yes, this series of brake uh, 
like uh, break issue or whatever is still not over so yes uh, but i guess that's going to be it for this episode so then see you guys soon